if you've ever wanted to add film looks to your images, but it just seems a little intimidating or overwhelming, well, maybe you need Film Pack. DxO just announced Film Pack 8, and we're going to go over some of the new features in today's video. So let's go ahead and jump into the computer. The first new feature with Film Pack 8 is that we can use it as a plugin panel icon over here inside of Photoshop. In order to activate that, what we're going to do is come up to plugins and then we're going to click on plugins panel. This is going to give us our little panel over here with all of the applications that we can use inside of Photoshop. As you can see, DxO Film Pack 8 is right here. So if I click that, I get this little icon over here. Now, what's cool is DxO has integrated Film Pack into your Photoshop workflow without ever needing to go into Film Pack. Let me show you how that works. So now that I have Film Pack selected here, I can go ahead and click any one of the presets that are inside of Film Pack. So I'm going to go ahead and click on negative, and I'm just going to select one at random. We'll click on Fuji Pro. Now, that wasn't a very aggressive look, so let's try a different look just so that way we can see a huge difference. Let's go with this one right here. So I'll click on it and we'll let Photoshop do its thing, think it itself through. And based off of the power of your machine, this can go faster or slower. So just keep that in mind if you're going to use this particular workflow. But just that easy, I've already applied a look from DxO Film Pack 8 by clicking on the icon. Now I'm gonna click this blue check mark to commit this to the image. And so now this new layer has that film pack look on the image. Now, of course, this is going to allow you to just stay inside of your own Photoshop workflow. So for those who are heavy users of Photoshop and you just wanna get a quick look, well, you don't even have to open film pack to get the look keep it really, really simple. I think this will be helpful for the photographers that use Photoshop as opposed to some of the digital creators that want more finite control over editing their files. But now that we've seen what's new inside of Photoshop, let's go ahead and jump into the standalone version of Film Pack because that's the way that I primarily use it and the way that I think many people will use it. All right, so here we are inside of Film Pack 8, and we're going to take a look at one of the new features, which is Time Warp. Now, what Time Warp allows you to do, if you click this icon here, is it's going to cycle through centuries of imagery. And if you see something that sparks your eye or excites you, then what you can do is click to stop this. So I'll stop it on this one here, and I'll just hit Apply and Close. And what's going to end up happening is it just applies it to the image. So really, really easy way of adding in creative looks on your images. Now, another aspect of the Time Warp tool is the Ageify. So if we come into Time Warp and we select Ageify down here, what Film Pack is going to do is kind of cycle through each of these aging effects on the image. And then when you find one that you like, you can just hit apply and close. And what it's going to do is the exact same thing that happened earlier. So those are some great ways of finding inspiration. And I may use those from time to time. We'll see. Now, inside of Film Pack 8, there were a few film stocks that have been added. I have them set over here to my favorites, and these aren't all of them, but these are some of the ones that I found interesting and fun to use. One of my favorites is this Harmon Phoenix 200 look. I think that this will be really fun to play around with because even after you get your preset established, what you can do is come over here to customize and you can tweak this to your heart's content however you need to in order to make this look the way that you want. So I really like the warm uh, analog noisy look or digital grain look or film grain. Now, speaking of digital, there are a few digital stocks that were added. So if we click on filter and come down to digital films, and if we scroll down to the very bottom here, you can see we have now S black and white, which is modeled after Sony. And then, of course, we have 
the high contrast and another one that is modeled after Sony for mono. So if that's something that's interesting to you, you now have the ability to model some images based off of digital film stocks inside of the Sony camera. Now, one of the cool and unique things inside of the film pack, I think it was introduced in film pack seven is the time machine. And similar to what we looked at with the time warp, where it goes kind of through the centuries of photography. Well, the film pack time machine is really geared towards letting you see images that were captured using the film stock or the film technique that's being emulated here inside of film pack. And they've added more images for inspiration. And to cycle through these, you can um, click through, let's just hit back here. You can click through on the arrows and you get some history information here, which is pretty cool because if you're wondering well, what made this particular film stock so important or so unique? Well, you get a little bit of story behind it. And of course, if you don't care about the story, you don't have to even pay attention to that. You can just jump through here. But let's say I like what's going on with this particular film from the 1900s. This one is from 1907. There's a few em emulations down here that you can click on. So let's just go with this middle one. And that has now been applied to my image. So really easy to get looks. And that's kind of the point of the time machine. Now, an additional aspect that's been added to the time machine is the portrait timeline. So if we click over here where it says DXO Film Pack Timeline, you get a drop down for the portrait journey. And this is really geared towards looking at portrait photography through the centuries of imagery, right? So if we click on something, let's go with like 1970s and we're working with a color image. So let's see, let's say we like what's going on with this particular portrait. Well, the matching rendering is 1979 LGD. So if I click that and then close this down, you can see what it's done to the image on the background here. Now, of course, you have all of your tools to compare. I like the slider view. So everything that's on the right side of the image is the edited version or the version of the image that has that filter on it or the emulation. And then on the left side is the original. So you can see how that all plays together. And it's just another really fun and creative way of working through the filters. Now, a new feature that's added in Film Pack 8 that I can't really demonstrate for you because I don't have any is the processing of scanned film. If you have scanned film, then you know who you are. And Film Pack 8 has some tools and presets that you can actually apply that will help correct some of the common issues that you have with those. But again, I don't have anything to show you, so I do apologize for that. Now, the final thing that's been added to Film Pack 8 is high resolution effects. Now, this is really great if you are producing large prints or something where the effects weren't quite up to standard for the resolution that you were working with. You now have better resolution in the effects. So that's super helpful. And that's going to be your frames, your textures, and light leaks. Now, of course, I don't have any of these actually applying to the image, but that's going to be higher resolution overall when you start working with those. Now, one of the questions that I'm asked quite regular is, well, how much does this actually cost? And so here's the prices that are available as of right now, what I understand, all right? If you wanna save some money on the new license, it doesn't work for the upgrade, you can use my coupon code. It is an affiliate link, which means I make a commission from everyone who uses it, but it's at no extra cost to you. In fact, you get to save money whenever you're purchasing a new license. Again, it does not work for upgrades. This is what it would cost you to purchase Film Pack. And then if you add in that code for a new license, then you'll save some money. 
if you decide to pick up Photo Lab 9 and Film Pack, if you have just kind of been on the fence of like, do I get Film Pack and Photo Lab or Photo Lab 9, um, and you want to unlock some of the superpowers inside of Photo Lab, you definitely want Film Pack to go alongside it. This is what you'll pay. Now, again, for a new license, you can use that coupon code that I'm flashing on the screen here, as well as down in the description box below to save you a little bit of money. Now, I never tell people if a software is for them or not for them, but if that's something you need a little bit of help with identifying if this fits into your workflow, you can definitely sign up for a training call with me. A link for that is down in the description box below, and we can kind of talk through your use case just so that way if you have questions on does this actually make sense for me to get, well, I can kind of help talk you through that. All right. Uh, that way you don't end up investing money into something that you don't actually need or want because it doesn't do what you expect it to do. If you got questions, leave it in the comment section below. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on Film Pack 8. Is this the update or upgrade that you've been waiting for? I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the new features. So until the next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.